Hi friends and welcome back to the Living Well with Bipolar Disorder channel. I'm Patty and in today's video I want to talk about some of the life lessons that I've learned as someone with bipolar disorder. Um, I do want to emphasize, like in a lot of my other videos, I am not an expert. <laughs> um, also, I want to point out that even though I call this a life lesson, it doesn't mean I've completely mastered it. I don't know that I've mastered anything. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. But these are things I think people maybe want to know or need help with, or maybe if you're newly diagnosed, I think these would really help for you. So the first, um, the first kind of life lesson I want to talk about is the fact that once you get diagnosed, um, it's really important to not consider yourself as flawed, um, that there's something wrong with you or anything like that. You really need to, over time, establish that you're a person with bipolar disorder, but you're not bipolar disorder. And that's a great distinction to make because when you're um, sort of self, Oliver's coming, <laughs> of course. Um, when you're thinking about who you are and um, you know, looking at your emotions and your thoughts, and for me, my body image, I have to consider all of that in who I, wa who I am and just kind of understand that there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing weird about me. It's just, I have bipolar disorder and in some ways, you know, I can, it sounds weird, but you can use it to your advantage. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. The other thing um, is after a diagnosis or if you're, if you're pretty, here you go. Oliver has to be part of the video. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, if you're newly diagnosed, um, I think it's important. Um, one thing I tried to do, once I accepted that I had bipolar disorder, it did not happen right away. Um, I had to experience more clear, distinctive mood changes and the symptoms of those mood changes and finally come to this, to recognizing that it is in fact what I struggle with. Uh, because once you do that, once you accept it, um, then you can decide on what kind of help you're going to want, what kind of treatments you're interested in, and um, kind of where to go from from there. So I think it's really important. And then also, um, I think it's important to just start to be comfortable with who you are. And I'm still working on that one for sure. Um, but I think sometimes when you're diagnosed or even, you know, my childhood, I always figured something was different about me. Um, some of the things I would say or do or think especially um, just always seemed a little bit different and I seemed to perceive things a little bit differently than other people. Um, and so, uh, but over time and now at my age, I just become more and more comfortable with who I am and that bipolar disorder is one element of me, it's one aspect of me, but it's not all of me. Um, and in fact, I've, I've at first looked at it as a very negative thing, that this was some kind of punishment or dark spot on me or something like that. But now I think about some of the benefits and I think one of the biggest benefits is empathy. You develop so much empathy for other people and their own struggles, whether they're bipolar or not. Um, and you just develop a strong empathy towards people that are struggling or maybe struggling. And I think that's probably one of the biggest benefits I've, I've received of, of my diagnosis and having lived with it for this long. And um, so yes, establish uh, who you are as a person and you don't have to have the exact answer all at once. I think we naturally just evolve and look at ourselves differently at times and make changes and change, but really getting to know who you are with bipolar disorder is really, really important. And it's one of the biggest life lessons I've learned. 
Another life lesson though is understanding that some things may be a little more difficult for you than for somebody without any kind of mental health struggle. And I don't want to say that they're impossible because they're definitely not, but you just need to kind of understand that there are things that you might not be able to do, such as uh, work full time. Or, uh, you know, I know a lot of people with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, they really struggle with trying to work, especially a kind of a demanding, stressful, full-time work is really, really, really difficult. And, um, and so you may not be able to do that, and that's okay. You do have to get a little more creative with the things you can do in terms of employment. I think one of the greatest things is to look at your strengths. And, the, and your interests and your passions, and then look at a career or job um, from that perspective. So I think going back to the empathy thing, um, one of the jobs that I uh, applied for a number of times, and I'm really interested in it, is becoming a peer support specialist. I don't know if those are widely um, infiltrated throughout our country, but in Oregon, where I live, um, is pretty important and it's a pretty good paying job with benefits and it's also a job that you are you can be very open about your own illness so looking into ideas like that um, I think are really good uh, now I know I'm not going to be able to work a 40 50 hour work week under a lot of pressure and stress and with a lot of deadlines and things like that, I it, it will send me spiraling down um, for a number of reasons. But you know how stress is with bipolar disorder. They're just, uh, they're like little monsters, demons. And uh, so uh, I've been lucky to find jobs that have a more flexible schedule, which is really important. Um, and, uh, it's not an easier job, I won't say that, but it is, it fulfills a lot of elements uh, of what I need in a job or a career and in my life. And so it has, what I do now just has all of those little elements. And um, so it works really well for me. And uh, I can't always work full, a full week, but um, luckily my boss is very supportive of that. So um, just being creative, sometimes um, you may look for two part-time jobs. If, um, if there are two jobs that you really enjoy, that you really feel good, good about and feel supported, and maybe it's two part-time jobs instead of one full-time stressful job. So I don't know, you just be creative and um, just, I wouldn't call things limitations, I would just call them considerations more than anything else. And um, another thing, another life lesson for me has been, aside from just accepting who I am, is really learning that taking care of myself is really, really important. I think sometimes we feel a little guilty with self-care and um, that we're being selfish. And when other people say things like, oh, well, I can survive on four hours of sleep. Why can't you? Or, you know, things like that that can really bring you down. You just you have to ignore that stuff and, and just realize that it's important for you to take care of yourself. Whatever that means, if you need 10 hours of sleep, then sleep 10 hours um, or, you know, whatever it is, whatever works for you and keeps you healthy, you need to do that and not listen to what other people say that they can do and you should be able to do it too. I think I, hopefully our society is getting away from that, but because it, it, uh, it's one of my pet peeves, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, those are just a few of my life lessons. As I said, I, I just seem to learn things more and more each day and through every, um, episodes. Um, I'm getting better at identifying my hypomania, which I'm not so great at. Usually other people notice it before me. Um, and so I guess that's another life lesson is really trusting the people around you and paying attention to what they're saying to you and perhaps consider their feelings and their thoughts and, and what they're noticing. Um, consider that in, in your self-care and then pursuing treatment for that. So um, anyway, I have lots more. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, 
what your life lessons have been. Um, none of them are silly or anything. It could be about anything having to do with your bipolar disorder or just who you are. Um, but if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, um, subscribe and definitely comment down below on videos you would like to see and topics you would like me to cover and then also your thoughts on life lessons that you've learned. Put those in the comment section below. I would love to read them. And um, so yeah, again, once again, follow me on Instagram, which are mostly photos of Oliver. I know I say that every time, but they are. And follow me on Instagram and um, and I guess we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.